Hello, I'm Leanne Chivers, a guest presenter here on Create and Craft. I'm really excited to be involved in all of these new to you videos where we talk to you about some of our most popular products that we sell here on the Create and Craft channel. You may have already watched the little video about folding your cards and why a scoring board is so important to professionalise your results. What I want to do in this little video is talk to you about how your scoring board can also help you make really beautiful and professional gift boxes. The first little box I want to show you is really good for a beginner because it fits in a nice gift. You can do it in many different sizes and most importantly, you don't need any glue and you don't need any scissors, which is hard to believe, but I'm going to show you exactly why that's true. So what I've got to start with is a piece of A4 card and I'm working with A4 because that's the standard measurement for the UK and our scoring boards are all set up with the pre-scored measurements which work perfectly for A4 card. So the first thing I'm going to do is not score a line but mark where my halfway point is on the narrow end of my A4 card here and I would do that by finding half fold A5 because this width is the same as a piece of A5 card. So I'm going to mark that just with my scoring tool, half fold A5. And then I'm going to do exactly the same at the top here. So I've marked those two points, I know where they are. I'm then going to turn my card round and I'm going to score the half fold A4 line because I'm working with a piece of A4 card and I want my box to fold in half. So I'm scoring half fold A4. Then what I'm going to do is take my card and at the point where I marked the halfway on the narrow end I'm going to anchor that in one of my score lines by just keeping it still. I'm then going to line up to that same score line my halfway point. So the line I scored at half fold A4 which is here. And I'm going to score a line on a diagonal to join those two up. I'll then repeat that on both sides, so I just swivel my card round, seeing that I held it still in the scoring channel, and then I do exactly the same on the opposite side. So I find my halfway mark, decide where I'm going to score, line up my half fold line at exactly the same point, and score on the diagonal. And you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing in a second when I fold this up, and then do exactly the same on the opposite side. And then all I need to do is fold all of my lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold it in half, because I scored it in half. And then I'm going to fold in my diagonal lines and burnish those two. And actually, if you're somebody who's making wedding stationery, providing favours for 18th parties, 20, 21st parties, six, sweet 16 parties, bachelor parties, hen nights, it doesn't matter what it is, these are really good, quick little favour boxes to make because all you have to do now is fold it together. You've made a perfectly triangular gift favour box. You can do that in any size, you've just got to remember the halfway points on all four, so it doesn't matter the bit of card that you start with as long as you use the halfway points. And then when you decorate it up, no gluing, no cutting, but look how beautiful that is and would really help you make some very professional gift boxes for gifts for family and friends or if you're providing a service and earning some money then they're going to stand out from the crowd as well. So that's a basic favour box with no cutting and no gluing. You can then move on with your scoreboard and use some lines which have been specifically made to help you make a box lid and a box base without having to use two different sizes of pieces of card, which can be tricky. So let me explain what I mean by that. Here's a little gift box that we've made and decorated beautifully. The lid of the box and the base of the box go together effortlessly. One fits inside the other very beautifully. You can see I've got a lovely smooth action there. Usually, without the aid of a scoring board, the bottom piece of the box would have to be made a fraction smaller than the top to make these two go together and fit inside each other. Because if they were both the same size, that wouldn't happen or it would buckle and look a little bit ugly. With a scoring board where the measurements have been worked out for you, it makes it so much easier because you actually start with two pieces of card exactly the same size 
and because the scoring boards had all the measurements worked out, you get a lid and a base which fit together perfectly every time. So let me show you what I mean by that. I've already started with this one and I'm just going to check because I can't remember whether it's the lid or the base um, and I can see by where it's lining up on my scoreboard that that's the lid. So I've already done the lid and now we're going to do the base. So we take our piece of card, pop it up against the box base line and this size for box base, this size for box lid. So I score the box base on this side, the box lid on this side and then when I make them and put them together, they're going to go together effortlessly. I decide how deep I want my box to be and count along how many lines. I want two inches, so I'm using four lines because each one is half an inch apart. So I'm going one, two, three, four, and I'm scoring this line. And I'll do exactly the same on all four sides of my, of my card on the fourth line because my box is going to be two inches deep. Okay, so there I have scored all of my lines for my box and remember I've already got the lid pre-done to save a little bit of time um, for you. So I'm now going to cut the box so that we can put it together and you'll see in the four corners here I've got a square where all of the lines intersect and this is the mechanics of your box base or lid, how you put it together. So what we're going to do is cut along here to where the lines intersect and then we're going to just come in a little way and take out a tiny triangle just in the corner there on each one of those four squares. And to make it easy and to remember where you're cutting each time, rotate your card and always cut in the same place. So you can see here I'm cutting on the left and then I'm taking out the little triangle just to the right. So I'll turn the card round and I repeat that on all four of those outside squares. So I cut up to where the lines intersect, move in a little bit and take out a tiny triangle. And I do that on all four sides. Okay, and then move those little pieces. Then what I'm going to do is use my scoring tool and I'm going to score and I'm going to fold and burnish all of the lines. And that's exactly as you did when we were making a card in one of the previous new to you videos. The technique is exactly the same. So you fold it over and you burnish it with your scoring tool. But you also fold over and burnish the little flaps where our card, uh, sorry, where our box will join together. So the card will join to make a box. So burnish the line, fold it in and burnish it again. And you're going to go around and do that on all four sides. Okay, so there we go. And now it's ready to put together. So I would always at home use a wet glue, uh, like a white, a white water-based PVA type glue, and use some clothes pegs or some paper clips to clip it together. But because we're here for speed and not for efficiency, just so I can show you how it works, I'm going to use a tape pen. Now, if you've got a really good tape pen where um, it's nice and strong, you might get away with that. But usually... I would only recommend you using a wet glue. And it would glue in exactly the same way. So you would put the glue exactly where I'm putting it now, which are on the four little tabs that we've created at the corner of each, where we've cut the triangle away. That's where I'm applying my glue. And once I've got my glue in position, I then just fold the box up, match, the lines and the little tabs go inside to create my box base in this case. Let's see how easy that is. There we go. So I've created my box base. I'll just move that out of the way for a second. And then with my pre-prepared box lid, I'll do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to add my glue 
in exactly the same places. So you can see here that the box base and the box lid are made in exactly the same way and I've used two pieces of card exactly the same size. I've just scored them on the two different sides of the board where my measurements have been pre-worked out for me. There we go. And there's my box lid. And if I take my box base and put my box lid over, you can see that they go together absolutely perfectly. So the base and the lid fit. There's no resistance there. It's been created beautifully and then all I have to do is decorate it. And you can see that's exactly what we've done with these beautiful boxes. And you can see that they're all different sizes because your only restriction is the size of the piece of card you start with. And every single one of them will have a beautiful base and lid that works together and makes a really pretty arrangement or somewhere lovely to put a gift for somebody. And if you're selling your creations, people are always going to buy beautiful gift boxes because it makes a gift look so much more special. But don't forget, you could also do your very easy, no cut, no glue gift boxes. And I think you'll agree, it looks really good, but it's incredibly simple. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Check out all of our other new to you videos where we're showing you how to use our most popular products and most importantly, have fun having some time with your crafting. Thank you.